Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. Today's episode is the first in our health and safety series, and as you may have guessed it, it's all about personal protective equipment and respiratory protection. When it comes to PPE and you're working with the Department of Energy money, they can always require more than the bare minimum set by OSHA. But that relationship can't go the other way. If a job site requires a hard hat and safety shoes, for instance, you gotta don them. But for more on weatherization specific PPE, let's take a look at a previous episode we did on working lead safe. So let's uh, take a look at Ben Jr., our PPE dummy here, and see what he's got on. If you notice right on top, he's got something covering up his head. You want to make sure that you have either a painter's cap or a hood attached to your suit so you can prevent any lead-based paint dust from getting in your hair and you taking it home to your family. Now for just showing you here, we do have a, a suit that has the hood attached, and personally, I like these a bit better. If you take a look at Ben Jr.'s bunny suit here, he's got an open collar. Plenty of paint chips and dust can get down there into his street clothes. You don't want that, so uh, you know if you're a little more safety conscious, maybe go with the hood attached on your bunny suit. Next, you'll notice some of the other obvious items here. He's got on a pair of safety glasses to keep things out of his eyes. He's got on a respirator. We're going to talk about that in depth in just a couple of moments. Uh, of course, we mentioned the bunny suit. Uh, there are a lot of different brands on the market, uh, some of varying uh, durability. So you want to make sure you get one that holds up throughout your job. You want to get one that fits well. And as far as fitting goes, the bigger the better. These things are, are not a fashion statement. So you want to make sure you grab one that's big enough so you can move around and you're not ripping out the arms and, and so on. If we uh, go down to the end of uh, Ben Jr.'s arms here, we notice that he's also wearing a pair of disposable gloves. And of course, attaching that to the suit is just some duct tape. Nice idea there, very simple, easy to do. Following all the way down then, uh, our PPE dummy has on a pair of booties also attached much like you saw those, uh, those gloves up above. Again, like the hood, you can get a suit that has the booties attached. Now, again, if you don't have that, you've got this duct tape on there. If you do, we still typically recommend throwing on a pair of those disposable booties over top uh, because they can keep these from blowing out on the bottoms. So let's take a closer look at this respirator. If the program requires the use of a respirator, a few things are mandatory. First, fit testing must be done annually or more frequently if necessary. There must be a written respiratory protection program in place and the program must have an assigned respiratory protection officer. So here are several different types of respirators that are all approved for use with weatherization workers. Now they are all HEPA filtered. You can see that by this uh, magenta or purple color or by the number 100 on there. And they're also all fit tested respirators. Even this disposable N100, you see that seal around there, that seals against the face. That is actually a fit tested respirator, even though these are disposed of at the end of the day. Certainly not as economical as some of these others since you can continue to use uh, these reusable half face masks and, and the full face mask. Now if we look at the seal on these, we do note some differences. First of all, between these two, 
It's hard to see on film, of course, but we have a harder rubber there and a softer silicone. This one's also a silicone. And if you look, this one has two seals on here. So when you're picking out a half face mask or even a full face mask, you want to make sure that you look for one that is uh, going to be comfortable and you look for one that is fitting your face. And for some faces, that may require this double seal here. These reusable half face mask respirators have a safety factor of up to 10, meaning you can go up to 10 times the OSHA permissible exposure limit for particulate in the air. Now this full face mask, you'll note has considerably more surface area to seal against. You're having essentially the same amount of sealing area against the, uh, the bridge of the nose and on down the, uh, the cheek line there. And then you also have this seal that goes all the way around the face from the chin up to the forehead. So with a full face mask, even with the same cartridges on there, we're getting a factor, a safety factor of up to 50. So 50 times that permissible exposure limit set by OSHA. Couple of other things to note. We mentioned the cartridges on here and there are several different types. You have kind of these fabric cartridges here that are nice and lightweight. They're a HEPA filtered cartridge. Uh, these magenta colored ones here, even though they're plastic, they're also a HEPA cartridge. And this one, you note, has a, uh, a yellow or mustard colored uh, stack on there. This is a stacked cartridge, meaning it has HEPA filtration as well as an organic uh, filter on there. So this filter is essentially either filled up with uh, a resin or with a, uh, a carbon source and that uh, carbon or resin then absorbs those volatile organic chemicals and, uh, and prevents those from entering into your, your lungs there. Those, the minute you open them up, they're only good for a set amount of time. So you want to make sure you look at the manufacturer's set change out schedules for those. As far as the HEPA filters that you see here, these are mechanical filtration devices, meaning that uh, when you look at these, if you look at the inside, it's just a material that actually uh, prevents those particles from coming through it. So it's like a big sieve. The more particles that hit that, you know, the more it actually clogs up those little holes in there. And so it's, it's preventing even more particles from coming through. Now, HEPA cartridges, they filter out all particles that are 0.3 microns or larger. Actually, instead of all particles, we should say 99.97%. So quite a few of those. And uh, 0.3 microns, it doesn't mean a lot to you when we say that, but if you think about the size of a bacterium, you've probably all heard of E. coli on TV and drinking water systems and things like that. A bacterium like E. coli is about two microns in length. So we're talking about filtering out particles that are one sixth that size. When you compare that to the diameter of a hair, for instance, which is about 80 microns, you can tell we're talking about some pretty tiny particles. So let's say I've decided on this mask. I decided that based on the level of protection that I'm seeking and the types of hazards that I'm facing on the job. Well, the next step is the fit test. And I know that in the fit test, this is going to turn out to not be the right mask for me because I have facial hair that's touching the inside seal. I'd either have to shave in order to wear this mask, or I can move on to a different form of respiratory protection. Now for more on the fit test, let's take a look at one in action. Before beginning a fit test, employees must be medically cleared to wear a respirator. Here our fit tester Tony checks for a seal by covering the inhalation and exhalation valves. Irritant smoke is used to detect leaks while the subject works through the OSHA protocol. These steps include reading aloud from the rainbow passage, making various facial expressions, and performing vigorous activities to ensure the seal remains seated throughout the workday. Once you've found a mask that fits properly, you need to take care of it. Here are some tips for cleaning and storing your respirator after use. When you're using a mask like this one, you can reuse the cartridges. Take these off and you'll notice a plastic ring where it attaches to the mask piece itself. Put a piece of tape on there. 
That keeps any dust from the outside of this from getting in there. You can place these in their own plastic baggie then and take your mask with a wet wipe and make sure you wipe it all down inside and out to prevent any dust from gathering inside there and you breathing it in the next time you put it on. Now your cartridges may look like these. These are all plastic. Again, you want to make sure that any dust that's gathering on the outside here doesn't get inside the filter or inside your mask. So here, since it's all plastic, you can go ahead, leave them directly on the mask, put a piece of tape over that, take your wet wipe, and as you're cleaning the rest of your mask, clean this off as well and place the whole thing in your bag as a unit. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. If you still have questions on respiratory protection, get answers directly from the source by going to OSHA.gov and do a search for Respiratory E-Tool. It's a great resource packed full of information. There's the medical evaluation form that we mentioned earlier. And of course, you can always get in touch with us through the blog. And hey, thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.